So this is where we stopped the last time. We had this wonderful web page on our local host on port 8080. And what we want to do is we want to make it accessible from the internet so this user can use our public IP and access our computer. Now, what do we have to do to make this work? Let's think a, bit, a little bit. Now, this router or router has a firewall, so we have to take care that this router um, makes port 8080 accessible, but seems, um, <laughs> no, makes port 8080 accessible from the outside and is forwarding every request that comes to port 8080 to this computer. That's something we have to do. And another thing we have to take care of, sometimes there are um, additionally to firewalls in this router, also firewalls on your computer. Or not sometimes, it's, it should be like that. And if it is like that, you also have to take care that on your computer you have rules where you tell the firewalls okay this is port 8080 I know what I'm doing you can let this go through to my engine X server on my computer okay so let's do that now the first thing we will do is we will check on our router now I can only tell you how this works on my router but so you even find the settings of your router, I would recommend you to do the following. Uh, to do the following. What I usually do is I open a command prompt and enter ipconfig. And here is I see the default gateway of my computer, which is 192.168.1881. And this means that my computer is going through this gateway to the internet. At least in smaller networks it's like that. If you're a huge company it's probably not like that, but in our company and in the offices and in my homes I, I have worked so far, this, this always worked. So open the command prompt, enter ipconfig and you see your gateway. Now, what we do with this gateway is we enter it in our browser. And usually, you know, here you usually see some basic information. You can make a lot of adjustments here, like turn on Wi-Fi, change your Wi-Fi password, change the SSID. You can check what computers are connected to the network. All that stuff doesn't matter to us. Now, what I rec would recommend you is go to something like internet and then here it's called permit access, but it's, it has something to do, sound like that. And then here you already see port sharing. Now, I already did this, but let me delete that so I can Create it again. Okay, now here I have to add a device for sharing. Now, first I select which device I want to share. Now, yeah, this doesn't tell me too much, so I guess it's this one, but I'm not sure, maybe it's this one. So if you also have quite a list of, of devices and you don't, you're not sure which one it is, then I can also give you a little trick. Now, you see here, you have uh, 192.168.188.2020. So that's your IP address of your computer. And in my case, I can just select uh, different devices and then it tells me the IP address of the devices. Like if I choose Google Nest Tab, I see it's 20. Okay, that's not the device because my computer has 22 and I want to forward to my computer because that's where the Nginx server is running. So if I select Toby, I see, okay, it's um, 22. So this looks like the correct device. Um, 
Now, I don't have to enable any of this stuff and I would not click on something like this, like make it completely open. I would really recommend you to open only the ports where you know, okay, this is good. Where you know, I know what I'm doing. Okay, and here I click new sharing and yeah, yeah. immune, I don't know that still exists. Now, uh, application, I give it a name, let's say Nginx. Nginx ADA. So I know later on what I, what this port stands for. And uh, port to device 8080 through 8080. So this means every request that comes to my router from outside the internet to port 8080 gets forwarded to port 8080 on my computer. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is good. And then here I click OK. And that's it. Now, as you can see, I made this port forward, so whenever something from the internet comes on port 8080 to this router, it knows because I just included this rule, okay, 8080, I have to forward it to this computer. That makes sense. Now, I did not have to do this on my computer, but if this is not working like this, then what you can do is go to your firewall settings on, uh, on Windows and you can add an inbound rule, like a new rule, where you also say, I want to forward a port, TCP, and here I specify the port and allow the connection for all, uh, all these, um, in Windows you always have public, private, and domain. And I allow it for all three profiles. And I also give it a name. But I did not have to do this. Uh, it worked for, in my case already. Uh, I guess I have some other rule. Usually I don't do any changes here. I let the software that I installed do the changes. And and if you also have um, a virus protection installed on your computer, they also usually come with a firewall. So you might also have to check there if you have to um, forward the port if it's not working. Now, if everything is working, uh, what you can do is mm, you have to know what's your, what's your IP address. How do you find out about that? Now, what's always a good idea, usually it's in your router, the information here in overview. I get my IP address, address which is changing constantly. No, I can find it here. Uh, online monitor, connect, uh, here we go. Um, but, if that is not working for you, what you can do is Google. Google knows everything. What is my public IP? Probably some other search query is also working. I just used that. Okay, now this one is bad because it's only showing me my IP6 address. Sorry about that. It's fine. What is my IP? Oh, come on. This can't be true. Ah, ba, 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 my IP information. How come it's only finding IP6 addresses? IP version 4 and IP version 6. Okay, IP version 4, still checking. Okay, here we go. Now this is my IP version 4 address. And now if I use this address with port 8080, 
I also get to see this page. Now, I did not, <laughs> I did not show you that this is not working before, enabling this. So let me make this real quick. Let me disable this again. Uh, let's see if I get a disable button so I don't have to create it afterwards again. Nah, too bad. Too bad. No disable button. Okay, let me delete that again. And now, yeah, this is not working because now the router here is telling, hey, I'm, I'm not letting anything through. I, I don't want this, uh, I'm blocking everything on port 8080. It's still loading, but um, yeah, this, this will load indefinitely or in endlessly, endlessly. See, it's um, not much going on. So, yeah, I will not, um, let's just do it real quick. Didn't take too much time. Okay, uh, engine X, 8080, please select protocol, 8080, everything's fine, enable sharing. And now we should also, this should also work again. See, that's all I had to do. You might have to do more. Now, let me check on my list what's on the next video in this tutorial. Oh yeah, the next thing, the next one gets really interesting because you, you cannot tell your customers to memorize your IP, which is constantly changing. Um, that's that's not working. So what we want to do in the next video is let me make this bigger again. We don't want the user to connect directly to your router by using your public IP. We don't, we don't want this connection here from here to here. Instead, we want him to enter a subdomain of LumaBit. Um, we'll see what we will call it. Uh, I'm not sure about that yet, but we will create a subdomain and we will also forward the subdomain then to this root 53 and this root 53 will then forward to the router. So I hope you like this session and if you do, I'm really looking forward to see you in the next video and yeah, have a great time. Bye.